All right, folks, it is my pleasure to report that we have a new XRP bank listing. Now, this is not an exchange that is listing XRP for sale. We've been covering those, and thankfully, a lot of the exchanges have brought XRP back on. We're not talking about a bank partnering up with Ripple. In this episode, we're talking about a bank selling XRP directly to its clients, offering it as a product or a service here, the ability to buy crypto, XRP now listed. So we usually are spending time talking about XRP being used on the back end, wholesale payments, talking about banks partnering up with Ripple. But in today's episode, I'm excited to report that we have more folks getting access to XRP. Let's get right on into it, folks. This is going to be a video that's going to be focused on cryptocurrency. If you guys appreciate what we do, please make sure you're liking all of our videos, tapping it, smacking it for me, sharing it out far and wide and everything's at ZachRector.com. Check it out. We got the scoop here from Eleanor Terrett. 80 pages outlining the Harris Walls economic plan. And boy, do they got some opportunity for you. Now, they do only mention digital assets once on page 56 alongside AI, the same statement she gave over the weekend at the Wall Street fundraiser. Their strategy includes both investing in emerging technologies and modernizing traditional industries. It will also encourage innovative technologies like AI and digital assets. How about that? A little bit of encouragement from VP Harris and Timmy Walls. Gotta love it. And uh, they also want to protect our consumers and investors. Boy, do we want to have a conversation about protecting investors and what your SEC has been doing. They are now forced to admit that the tokens themselves are not a security after taking a massive loss to Ripple and XRP. I had to retweet this one out from the testimony that Hester Pierce and the other commissioners, along with Gary Gensler, gave to our Congress. But this is Hester Pierce right here admitting what we've been saying, what Ripple had to spend $200 million fighting for, what the XRP had to go through hundreds of billions worth of damages for, all because the SEC picked a fight with not just Ripple, but the entire XRP community, saying that XRP in and of itself was a security, and that all of us selling XRP were selling an investment contract. And they took a massive L. Now we have Hester Pierce. And, you know, I don't know if she gave an apology. I don't know if she said sorry. <laughs> but she is here admitting, quote, we admit that now actually the token itself is not a security. That's something that we should have admitted long ago. Whoopsie daisies. Just a little accident. Just hundreds of billions of damages done to the XRP community. Just trillions of damages done to the broader cryptocurrency space in the United States of America. Part of a, you know, many, many, uh, many, more, many other schemes, right, uh, that have caused many more damages and much profit to those that have been on the inside. And we've talked about that, how BNY Mellon's now getting the free pass to be a custodian. BlackRock's eating up most of the Bitcoin along with other Wall Street players now that they've gotten the ETF. Now that they're set up, now that Wall Street's in it, they're, uh, we're seeing, you know, shilling it for us. I, I don't have to sell XRP. I don't have to sell crypto. Now we got the Grayscale XRP Trust Live. Uh, ETF comes next. But the point being is that Wall Street's now selling this thing for us. We don't have to rely on myself or others anymore. Now, let's get into it, folks. I don't want to keep you hanging here. Let's get right on into it. So what we have here Originally shared out by Wrath of Kahneman. He's the one that uh, brought this to my attention. So huge shout out to Wrath of Kahneman. Does great work and great updates in regards to XRP on X. Uh, Garanti BBVA. So this is one of the entities in relation, part of the umbrella of the BBVA banks. One of the largest private Turkish banks here is now offering XRP on its app, along with Arbitrum. The app offers Bitcoin, AVAX, USDC, Ethereum, and Chili's, CHZ. Parent company BBVA, also Ripple client via Medico. And I'm about to dive into that partnership and show you how this all gets connected. One other thing that I want to point out, though, while we're at it, they're bringing XRP on. So now it's available for their clients to actually buy XRP on their app. And this goes to show, right, that the banks like this bank right here, BBVA, are wanting to step in and cut out Robin Hood. They want to cut out the crypto exchanges, right? This is the game plan all along. If they're forced to buy, and many of the you know Wall Street boys and girls are already invested in Coinbase and many of the other biggest players in the space now, and of course with the ETFs, 
uh, you know, they, they control a considerable amount of the Bitcoin right now. And that will, you know, that share will continue to grow. BlackRock was buying Bitcoin yesterday, by the way. Um, but, but the point being here, uh, we're watching here. This is very interesting. This bank at the forefront of kind of offering these products and services. But what I'm going to be looking out for next is for them listing RLUSD. Once that goes live, I want to see if they list Ripple stablecoin issued on the XRP ledger. RLUSD once that goes live. We see that they are offering USDC, but because we know that they're a Ripple partner, I'm wondering if they're going to be a bank that offers RLUSD um, you know, uh, to their users as well. But nonetheless, the point here is that they are now offering XRP, and I found this rather interesting right here. They make this comment. The bank is now providing service for Ripple XRP the crypto asset with the largest market in Arbitrum. Now, I don't know where they're getting that from because they list off. They're joining Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDC coin, Avalanche, and Chili's. But they say that XRP is the crypto asset with the largest market. Now, that's not the case today with the data that we're pulling off of coin market cap and others, right? The market cap's not the biggest. So what are they saying? Was that a slip up? Was that just a mistake or am I looking into this too deep? You know, and this is just a, a mistake that they made. Or are they telling us something more? You know, XRP, the crypto asset with the largest market. We know that it did take that number two spot. We know that it's ready to take that number one spot, maybe. Uh-oh. Now let's dive in here because this one came out two days ago. Visa to help banks issue fiat-backed tokens on Ethereum via new tokenized asset platform. So Visa's stepping into the game, a little bit of tokenization. Who's going to be the first platform to bring this on? One of the first financial institutions to use the platform will be Spanish bank BBVA, who expects to launch a live pilot in 2025. So Visa has helped to develop a new product to help banks issue fiat-backed tokens on the Ethereum network. BBVA is going to be launching it here in 2025. This is the Visa tokenized asset platform will enable the development of fiat-backed tokens powered by smart contracts to help digitize and automate existing processes that will then power the exchange of real-world assets according to announcements seen by Coindesk. A bank would use Visa's new platform to purchase tokenized real-world assets such as commodities or bonds with near real-time settlement using a token, the statement said. One of the first financial institutions to use VTAP will be Spanish bank BBVA, who expects to roll out a live pilot in 2025. Visa's work in blockchain and digital assets is well established, with the company processing cryptocurrency payments and stablecoin USDC on Ethereum in March of 2021. And there's that Grayscale ad once again. Like I said, I don't need to shill crypto anymore. And not that I really have ever told anybody you have to buy, excuse me, or given anybody, you know, financial advice. Hey, you got to buy now. I've never even told anybody to buy XRP. I've always just said, hey, I like XRP. And now Grayscale's offering XRP. And as I've been saying, R3 wasn't the only institution that wanted to pick up a big bag of XRP. BNY Mellon heir Matthew Mellon wasn't the only bankster elite family member that wanted to pick up some XRP. And I don't think that BBVA is going to be the only bank to offer crypto assets directly to their clients, including XRP. Now, continuing on here, let's go back to this partnership with Medico, which was announced in late 2023. And of course, then Ripple had acquired Medico BBVA is partnering with Medico to strengthen its crypto asset services in Switzerland. So their Switzerland entity is the one that did the deal with Medico, and that is now controlled by Ripple, and they are using that product, Medico's Harmonize. Now, the key point on that that I want to make is it appears, and from my source, who is close, uh, my source on PolySign had said that basically there was no clients for PolySign Atomic Net. And that Ripple was taking on and going to be using Medico's Harmonize platform, right? And so uh, my source said that, hey, they even took some of the developers, some of the software developers from uh, PolySign and actually brought them over to work uh, at Ripple on Medico's Harmonize product, right? That they were just ditching AtomicNet. And so when I heard that, that was before they announced the... No, you know, uh, nobody wants to buy the assets for PolySign and Atomic Net, and basically the investment's going to become a write off. But that was be before that, where I'd gotten that uh, information. 
that basically there was no interest in atomic net and there really was no clients left there. And so uh, just bringing this back full circle though, Medico's harmonized product along with a few other products that they offer uh, were, were you know now acquired by Ripple and now the product offering is called Ripple Custody, right? So we got Ripple Custody, we got Ripple Payments. They've consolidated uh, their products and services and I like how they've done it because we were all talking about X via, X rapid, X current, X this, X that. Now, and, and then it got consolidated to Ripple Net and on-demand liquidity, which settled with XRP. So we had two different. We had Ripple, uh, Ripple Net, which didn't use XRP, and then we had on-demand liquidity, which did use XRP. Now it's just Ripple Payments, and I think that they're moving you know, as many as, as the payment flows as they need to to XRP, but they needed to be able to offer these other ramps and obviously these other products like custody to their clients. And this is helping to bring more banks into the Ripple and XRP ecosystem. Now, I think that this bank is at the forefront of embracing this technology. They're going to benefit from that very well, along with all of those uh, that are listening to this episode here with me, talking about this and understanding this. We are at the forefront of this, and I think that us investors, along with these banks that lean into this, are going to be leaps and bounds above the competition, and partnering up with companies like Ripple is the way to do it. I mean, you can see they already got the partnership now with Visa as well. They're already moving, and this is the statements made here by the CEO of that Switzerland entity, BBVA. Alfonso Gomez, quote, banks play a key role in consolidating the crypto asset ecosystem. Now, that's a pretty interesting statement considering that we've already seen a considerable amount of Bitcoin being eaten up by Wall Street, right? And that's not so much the banks, but, uh, you, know, the, you know, the banks are getting their piece of the action, being custodians. And then we're seeing players uh, like BlackRock, right, that are accumulating large sums of Bitcoin, along with other hedge funds and other Wall Street players. So you got Wall Street and banks set to play a key role in consolidating the crypto asset ecosystem. I think that this CEO gets it. And that's why they chose Medico, and that's why Ripple acquired Medico. Is they were looked at this and they said, "Okay, this technology works well. Uh, we want to buy this. Medico makes sense." So they acquire Medico. Then they move on over to PolySign and Jack McDonald's companies, and they take a look at it and they say, "Hey, you know, PolySign, Atomic Net, not really there. We'll take uh, what we can as far as developers, but most importantly." We're going to buy PolySign and, uh, or, or, or basically, uh, we're going to buy standard custody so that we can acquire the trust license. And so this is why Ripple's been set up, uh, you know, being able to check off that New York DFS compliance, that license there for a trust company, offering their custody solutions. Now they're bringing the stable coin. We bring this full circle back to the asset that we all want to see go up in price, right? XRP. Now you're seeing banks listing XRP. So Normally, we're looking for exchanges to list XRP. Normally, we're talking about banks partnering with Ripple. In today's episode, we're talking about a bank listing XRP to sell directly to their retail end users, their retail clients. Talk about adoption. Talk about another wave of liquidity, right? Talk about flipping a switch. Oh, no, oh dear goodness. I better not say that word, right? I made sure I didn't put that in the title because I know that's a triggering phrase. But folks don't get it from a fundamental perspective. These are all switches at the control panel, at the dashboard that Ripple has, right? They, they're flipping that custody switch. They're about to flip the stable coin. And we're about to see potentially on-demand liquidity corridors fired up in the United States, partnerships in the United States as well. There's a lot of switches on that desk. And so Ripple's just getting started. And we want more access to XRP. Now, am I going to tell my grandma to buy the XRP ETF? No, I'm going to help her buy some XRP. Uh, you know, and store it in her own wallet or help her, you know, be, be her own bank and store her own XRP. I'm not going to get Grammy into the uh, Bitcoin ETF or the XRP ETF, but we're going to buy the underlying assets, right? So that's the game right now for me is just to continue to stack and accumulate while we see those that are leaning in are going to get ahead. Those that don't are going to get left behind. And we know that we got our bags, no matter which way this goes. We positioned ourselves correctly with the right assets at the right time. And now is our moment. This thing's set to go off here in the next couple of weeks. A make or break moment for XRP. You guys hang in there. I know folks want to see price action today and they don't get that although Ripple's flipping a switch here, 
BBVA uh, in Turkey, the Turkey BBVA entity is flipping the switch and offering XRP to its clients. It's not going to lead to price action today, but it's the start and it's the building of liquidity coming in and the access to XRP. This is what we want. This is what we've been waiting for. It's going live, and I just love to see it. If you guys like what you're seeing as well, make sure you guys tap it, smack it, share it out far and wide. Everything's at ZachRector.com. I appreciate you all. God bless. I am your host, Zach Rector. I really appreciate all of the love and support. If you want to support the channel, just remember that you can start by smashing that thumbs up for me, sharing this content far and wide, and everything else is at my website.